Remember, while you're listening, write your answers on the question. Hello, dear students of grade 8, and welcome to a new episode of Target English. In today's episode, we will read passages about a very wonderful building. We will also read about wonderful things and treasures around the world. And we will learn some new interesting vocabulary and finally go to language functions. I hope that you will enjoy our episode for today. Now we will take a short break. Please stay with us and get ready. See you after the break. Remember, while you're listening, write your answers on the question. Welcome back, dear students. As I told you before the break, today's episode is for grade 8. It is from unit 4, lessons 3 and 4. In today's episode, we will read passages and um, answer set book questions. We will learn new vocabulary and finally deal with some language functions. I hope that you will enjoy it today. Let's go to the first part and know what should we do at the end of this episode. The outcome that we will get, you will learn by the end of this episode to read for specific information, then express likes and dislikes, and finally give opinion. Now let's move to the first part. Look at this fantastic building and try to tell me, what's this? Of course, it's a mosque, but what's the name of this mosque and where it is? Actually, this mosque is called the Blue Mosque. The Blue Mosque is one of the most beautiful mosques in the world. But where it is and who built it? To know this, we will read a passage. And first, we will learn some new vocabulary to help us read the passage and understand it. Let's go to the first word and look at the first picture. Have a look at this picture. Who's this? Or what does he do? Look at his clothes. He looks like an important person. He is a ruler, an Islamic ruler. We call him Sultan. So Sultan is a Muslim sovereign or a Muslim ruler. Now try to use the word Sultan in a sentence. Think carefully. It's an easy word. We can say, for example, the Sultan has got a big palace. The Sultan has got a big palace. Now, we move to another word. Have a look at the picture. We have a very huge building. And in the middle of the picture, we have a large space. But what do we call this space? We call it a courtyard. Courtyard. Try to say the word again. Courtyard. A courtyard is an area enclosed by buildings or walls, like in a castle or a large house. In your school also, there are or there is a courtyard. Now think about a sentence. Use this word in a sentence. We can say, for example, the Umayyad Mosque has a very big courtyard. Have a look at the picture. This is the Umayyad Mosque. And we can see in the middle of the building that we have a very big courtyard. So again, we will have a word related to mosques. 
Have a look at this picture. It's part of a mosque. And in most of the mosques in the world, we have this part of the building of the mosque. But what do we call it in English? It is called a minaret. Say it again, please. Minaret. And a minaret is a narrow tower joined to a mosque where a muezzin calls to prayers. Let's try to put it in an example sentence. For example, we can say, the minarets of the Blue Mosque are very tall. They are very tall. We'll move to another word. Have a look at this word. What can you see on the floor of this place? We can see these pieces in our houses and bathrooms. What do we call them? We call them tiles. Tiles. And a tile is a flat piece of baked clay used for covering walls and floors. And again, we will use the word in a sentence. Have a look at the picture and the sentence. Blue tiles decorate the walls in the Blue Mosque. This is another piece of information about the Blue Mosque. Blue tiles decorate the walls of the Blue Mosque or in the Blue Mosque. Another word. Try to tell me. What is the time now? In the picture, it's about 12 o'clock. We still have 5 minutes to 12. So it is not 12 o'clock. It is Nearly 12. Nearly. Say the word again, please. Nearly. And we mean by nearly, almost, but not quite, or not completely. Have a look at this picture. We can say, your tank is nearly empty. Look at the tank of the car. It is not completely empty empty, it is nearly empty. And now we will use these words to read the passage about the Blue Mosque. Please try to remember the words and read along with me. The Blue Mosque is one of the most impressive landmarks of Istanbul. Sultan Ahmed ordered to build it in the 17th century. It took seven years to finish the building. The Blue Mosque is square with a large courtyard in front of it. Remember the word courtyard and the word Sultan. It has six pointed minarets. It is known as the Blue Mosque because of the beautiful blue tiles that decorate the inside walls. From the outside, the mosque isn't blue at all, except the dome, except the dome. The Blue Mosque is the most spectacular building in Turkey. It is the most spectacular building in Turkey. Now, let's try to answer two set book questions about the passage, and they are all about the Blue Mosque. The first question is, try to read the question with me. Where is the Blue Mosque? I have already given you the answer. Where is the Blue Mosque? And you can see the answer is in Turkey. The Blue Mosque is in Turkey, in Istanbul, in Turkey. Now, let's move to the second question. Why was it called the Blue Mosque? I told you that the mosque from the outside is not blue at all. So, why was it called the Blue Mosque? Let's have a look at the answer in the passage. It is known as the Blue Mosque because of the beautiful blue tiles that decorate the inside walls. So, the inside walls of the Blue Mosque are covered 
with blue tiles. This is why it is called the Blue Mosque. I hope that you will visit this fantastic building or read about it more. Now we will move to another part of our episode today. We will talk and read about wonderful things. Now, look at this picture. Have you ever seen it before? What's this? Is it a man or something related to a man? Have a look at these two other pictures. You see, it's not a man, it's a mask. A mask of a very well-known or famous person. It is Tutankhamen's mask. We have another wonderful thing. Again, it is a mask, but from a very different part of the world. Have a look at these two pictures. Have you seen this before? It is the mask of Pakal. The mask of Pakal. We have one last wonderful thing. Have a look at this. They are not masks at all, but they are soldiers. You can see that we have a big number of soldiers with their weapons, carriages and horses. So they uh, make a full army and we call it the Terracotta Army. The Terracotta Army is made of, I will tell you, when we move to the words. Now, we have some words, then we will move to the reading passage to know about these wonderful things. The first word we got today is, you know from the picture, mask. Say it again, mask. And a mask is a likeness of a person's face molded or sculpted in clay or wax. Have you ever seen people uh, wearing masks in the theatre or in some place? Now we move to another word, which is about the picture. In the picture we can see that we have a box with a lot of money and gold in it. So if you have a lot of money and gold, what are we talking about here? We are talking about treasure. Say it again, treasure. And pay attention to the pronunciation of the word and the spelling, treasure. And the treasure is, as you can see, we have two expressive pictures. A treasure is a quantity of precious metals, gems, or other valuable things. But where can you find a treasure? Sometimes people find treasures while digging one of these places. Have a look at the picture. What's this? It's a burial place. Can you give me the name? One word. Excellent. It's tomb. Say it again. Tomb. And again, pay attention to the pronunciation and the spelling of the word. A tomb is burial place, especially in a large underground vault. In tombs, we can also find other treasures, not necessarily gold. Sometimes we find pots. Look at this pot and try to guess what is this pot made of? Excellent! It is made of terracotta and we can call it terracotta pot. By terracotta we mean unglazed earthware used chiefly as an ornamental building material and in modeling. Have a look at this picture. If you see a very big number of um, soldiers with their arms, we can say that this is what? Right. Army. Army. And by army we mean an organized military force equipped for fighting on land. Again, 
an army is an organized military force equipped for fighting on land. Now, we will use these words to read the following passage, which is about wonderful things. Most archaeologists think that the mask of Tutankhamun and the treasures found in the tomb of the young king are probably the most wonderful discovery. Others think that the brighter hoard in Ireland, the mask of Bacal, the terracotta army in China, or Tel el Jewel hoard in Palestine, are the greatest of all. Visiting any of these places may give you great information about very important parts of the human history and culture. Try to visit these places and now try to answer the questions with me. The first question is, where can you see the Terracotta army? We have read that we can see the Terracotta army in, in China. Again, we can see the Terracotta army in China. The second question, why do we visit historic sites? If you visit a historic site, what can you get from that visit? Let's have a look at the answer. Visiting any of these places, or we can say any historic size, site, may give you great information about very important parts of the human history and cultures. Did you enjoy the passages with me? I hope so. Now we will use the new vocabulary we learned today to uh, fill in or complete spaces in sentences. Now let's read the sentence together. The students are gathering in the school space and we have four choices. A. Tile B. Sultan C. Courtyard and D. Minaret. Now think, which word is the right word to complete the sentence? Let's have a look. It's the word courtyard. Let's read the sentence as a whole. The students are gathering in a school courtyard. Let's move to the second sentence. Read along with me, please. My space pot dropped and broke. My space pot dropped and broke. And the choices are A, tomb, B, terracotta, C, mask, and D, tile. So please, I'll give you a minute and think which word can complete the sentence. Remember, in this type of questions, only one word is correct. And the right word here is terracotta. And the sentence, my terracotta pot dropped and broke. Now let's move to another exercise about the new vocabulary. In this exercise, you should fill in the spaces with the right words from the list. We have three words. They are minaret, treasure, army. Again, try to remember the meaning of these words first. Minaret, treasure, army. Now let's move to the sentences. Number one, I would like to be an officer in the Kuwaiti space. Don't give the answer, just go to the next sentence. The workers, the workers found a space while digging a hole. The workers found a space while digging a hole. Now we have two sentences and three words. We should use only two words to fill in the spaces in the sentences. 
I will give you some time. Try to read the sentences and the words and know the answer. Now let's see the answer together. The first sentence is, I'd like to be an officer in the Kuwaiti army. The second one, the workers found a treasure while digging a hole. The workers found the treasure while digging a hole. Now we move to the last part of our episode, which is language functions. In language functions, we have to know the right language to use in certain situations, situations and today we will focus on three situations. We should know how to express likes, dislikes and opinion. Likes, dislikes and opinion. Let's have a look at the first one which is expressing likes. We express likes through the following. We can say, for example, it is wonderful. If you see something or hear something and you like it, you can say, it is wonderful. We can also say, I like. And we can say, absolutely right or it's good. And finally, we can say, amazing. The um, second uh, language function is dislikes and it is um, expressed by the following I don't like it is quite bad absolutely wrong remember that we have to complete the sentences and um, just don't say these phrases or words and stop finally expressing opinion how to express opinion if you want to talk about something and give your opinion about it, you can say I think, and then complete the sentence, or in my opinion. And finally you can say I believe that. Let's see how to use them in real language um, situations. Let's see. You have to write what you would say in the following situations. The first situation is your friend is showing you his new bicycle. What can you say? He's showing you a bicycle, a new bicycle. So you have to express opinion. So you can say, for example, it is wonderful. We have another situation. A friend offers you cola, but you don't want it. A friend is offering you cola, but you don't want it. So what can you say to express Dislike, you can say, for example, I'm sorry, I don't like it. I prefer orange juice. I prefer orange juice. This means you don't like it. And um, uh, we have one last situation. Someone says that learning English is difficult. Is learning English difficult? You can express your opinion by saying, I believe that English is really easy. And by this uh, sentence, we come to the last situation uh, of the language functions. And also it is the last part of our episode for today. Today, we talked about very interesting topics. We talked about a very wonderful building which is the Blue Mosque in Istanbul in Turkey. We talked about some of the wonderful, most wonderful things in the world. We learned new words and knew how to respond in certain situations using language functions. Now we come to the end of our episode. I hope that you enjoyed it today with me. See you next time. Please try to study well. Goodbye. Remember, while you're listening, write your answers on the question.